Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. All praises to the Most High. All praises. How are you brothers doing this Sabbath day? And sisters, how are y'all doing? And we say shalom to the brothers and sisters online. All right, so today we're going to discuss a few things. We're going to keep the ball rolling where we have rolled from Chicago. We are going to keep this ball rolling regarding the campaign for change, the campaign for change. That is what the march was all about. And I do want to mention this regarding the march. We don't believe ever that there is power in a march. It can do nothing in particular. However, the image that's carried with it speaks wonders. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, image speaks volumes. Give me uh, First Ezra chapter 5. Yeah, but Bishop, that's what the world we in, yeah, that's why we see that when, when they do a march, people pay attention. They don't mean the march going to change anything, but that's how that statement being made. So we learned that. We learned that we want to make a statement in this earth before we leave it there. You understand? A lot of people don't understand that what we're trying to do. Then why, why are they trying to tell us what to do? <laughs> None of them do it. Remember, they're trying to tell us what to do. Guess what? The spirit of Mosai going to move Bishop to do things according to his laws, his statutes and commandments. That at the end of the day, guess what? We're going to make a statement in America. You understand? And when, we, when the Lord bless us so we get out in this captivity, guess what? We can rejoice over the greatest thing we do here in America. Guess what? Our people was repenting. Our people turned back to the true gods and turned back to the true laws. That's what, we, that's what our focus is on. Our people repenting from everywhere, gathering together the 12 tribe. That's what this whole thing is all about. Okay? So at the end of the day, guess what's going to happen? Either you're going to roll or you're just going to stay still. You understand me? But we and IUIC, we're about action. I'm going to say it again. We and IUIC, we're about action. You understand? We're not moving emotion. We, we are, we're not moving in feeling. We're about action. So if you're a man of action, this camp is for you. Welcome home, prophets. Welcome home. You understand? So we're going to keep it rolling, man. Uh, yeah, man, shout out to Chicago again, man, for the brothers, sisters who make sure that thing happening in Chicago. There was a lot of sisters behind it as well. Don't look at it. There was all men. There was a lot of sisters that came in, too, that was behind the scene that did great works. We also want to acknowledge daughters of Sarah. You understand? Because at the end of the day, guess what? We here for change. It's all about changing. You understand? If you're not there for change, you can hit the door. Jack, don't come back no more. All right? So we're about change. That's what IUIC is about. You ready? Yes. Let's open up with uh, Zechariah chapter 5. And let's start at verse 5. The book of Zechariah, chapter 5 and verse 5. This is the prophet Ze Zechariah during the Persian captivity. Go ahead. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what, it, and see what is this that goeth forth. Come on. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. The ephah is a measurement of a measurement. Okay, it's simply a measurement. Go ahead. He said, moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talon of lev, 
And this is a woman that sitteth. So the talent of lead is a weighty piece of lead. Go ahead. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And uh, he saw in his vision a woman sitting in the midst of this measurement of grain. Go ahead. And he said, this is wickedness. He said, this is wickedness. Go ahead. And he cast it in the midst of the ephah. And he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted up mine eyes and looked. And behold, there came out two women. And the wind was in their wings. For they had wings like the wings of a stork. So these two angels were female. Mm. And they had wings like the wings of a stork. Go ahead. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Uh -huh. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, whither do these bear the ephah? Where are these angels going to take the ephah, this measurement? Go ahead. Whither do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, to build it in house in the land of Shinar. Shinar is Babylon. Go ahead. And it shall be established and set there upon her own base. So this was a vision of Israel being rebuilt in the future here in Babylon. Shinar here is representing Babylon the Great. That's what this is talking about. And Israel would be built here. But the majority of our people, in the term, when it had that, that, that piece of lead on the mouth, this is why the majority of our people are speaking what? Wickedness. They're speaking this perverted Christianity. They're teaching the European, a European Jesus that loves everybody, all nations. That's the wickedness that was going on that Zechariah saw in the vision. From there, give me First Ezra chapter 5. There's going to be many obstacles in this truth, okay? Many, obst many obstacles are going to come across us from now on into the future. We don't realize what we've done. That march that took place, understand what I'm saying. Millions of people have watched that march. And I'm going to we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the proof later on at the, near the end of the class. Don't think it was just a few hundred or a few thousand. Millions of people. Come on. Well, verse uh, first Ezra chapter 5, we know this one, verse 52. And the Most High is going to turn the heat up on us. Understand, because he's going to separate the men from the boys, the women from the girls, the elect from the, 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 the tares from the wheat. That's what he's doing. Come on. And First Ezra chapter 5 and verse 72. Now, you know the verse didn't go nothing with what I was saying earlier. <laughs> Go ahead. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea and holding them straight, hindered their building. Hindered their building. So just as it was in the past, it shall be so again. Now, again, remember we used to do, we did many classes on loyalty. The Most High had us bring out many of those classes from a year ago to show what would, to prepare us for what was going to happen. He said, I'm going to show you some of the most disloyal men and women that sit in your midst. And that's exactly what he did. So now he's preparing us again. Here he says that our ancestors were held in straightly and hindered from building the temple at that time. As it was then, so it shall be today. And the temple that we're building today is the temple of Israel, meaning the people. Each man, each woman is a brick. Understand that. Go ahead. Verse 73. And by their secret plots. By their secret plots. And popular persuasions. Popular persuasions. Go ahead. And commotions. Mm -hmm. They hindered the finishing of the building you all know, the time. the thing about the commotions, I just want to say it about the commotions. You're a hate group. You're a hate group. It's a commotion to get people in the uproar. Oh, oh. That's what they do. That's what they do. And at the same time, it's all lies. How can you be hate group building men and women up? Giving them purpose and responsibility. That's a hate group? No, nah, brothers and sisters, that's not a hate group. Verse 73, one, one more time. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and mm -hmm. commotions, they hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. Now, let me show you this thing. Give me, uh, I sent you, the, it's on there. Give me COINTELPRO, Google, it's on there. I'm just going to show you. We've gone through this many, many times, but I know some of you are new, and I know some of you forget because you don't rehearse or study the notes that we've given you. So we're going to go over it, okay? Because some of you don't know what Co COINTEL stands for. As it said, uh, Officer Liam, can you read that first? Yes, sir. COINTEL Pro, portamento derived from counterintelligence program. That's what it stands for. Now, although they have a year, 1956 to 1971, don't you believe it? 
It did not begin in 1956 because that was in place during the time of Marcus Garvey, which was way before 56. That was around, what, 1920? Okay. So, and it has not ended in 1971 either. All they did was change the name. Change the name. Read on. The counterintelligence program was a series of covert and at times illegal projects conducted by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigations, mm -hmm. FBI, aimed at surveilling, infiltrating. I noticed that word, infiltrating. Go ahead. Discrediting. Now, that's primary, discrediting, discrediting. Go ahead. And disrupting domestic political organizations. Very, very important that y'all retain those words. Surveilling. Mm. YouTube and face, social media is the government's way of surveying us all. Right. Understand that thing. Uh, discrediting. We're going to get into that heavy today. And disrupting domestic political organizations. Jump down to the memo on Gene Seberg. Okay. Show, show the picture right there. That's her right there. Now, read from the third paragraph, Officer Leon, where it says she was. It says she, she was also? Yes, Jean Dorothy Seberg. She was also one of the best known targets of the FBI COINTEL Pro project. Why? Her targeting was as well documented retaliation for her support of the Black Panther Party in the 1960s. She supported them financially. So what uh, the government did was that they started to put out rumors on her to destroy her whole career. Okay, read on. Say Seberg died at the age of 40 in Paris with police ruling her death a probable suicide. Romaine Gary, Seberg's second husband, called a press conference shortly after her death where he publicly blamed the FBI's campaign against Seberg for her deteriorating mental health. Gary claimed that Seberg became psychotic after the media reported a false story that the FBI planted about her becoming pregnant with a Black Panther's child in 1970. So they ruined her whole mm. life. Go back. Go back to the article. So I'm showing you the secret plots that they do. So I don't want any of you to be misinformed, misunderstood. This is what they do. Now, go down to uh, methods. Go down to methods. Methods. Right there. Right there. And we're going to read there. Now, yes. on the side there, y'all see, read that little uh, side piece there yes, about sir. Fred Hampton. It says, body, the body of Fred Hampton, national spokesman for the Black Panther Party who was killed by members of the Chicago Police Department as part of a COINTELPRO operation. Fred Hampton died at the age. He was around 25. Mm -hmm. His best friend... Uh, went. Uh, he was arrested for something, and he gave the whole layout of where, what time he comes home, what time he leaves, where his wife would be in the bed, where he lay, lays at to sleep, and got this brother put to death. And that was Fred Hampton's good friend. Damn, good friend. Now I'm reading. I'm going over this show. It all pertains today. Now, methods. Mm -hmm. According to attorney Brian Glick, in his book War at Home, the FBI used five main methods during COINTELPRO. Now, I don't want you to forget the scripture we just read. Remember, 1 Ezra 5.73 said, And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions, they hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. What was true then is true today. Come on. Number one, infiltration. Agents and informers did not merely spy on political activists. Their main purpose was to discredit, disrupt, and negatively redirect action. Oh, discredit, disrupt, and negatively redirect action. We're seeing this live today, are we not? Yes, sir. Go ahead. The discre oh, they're a hate group. They're a hate group. Are you kidding me? Okay. Uh, disrupt negatively redirect actions. The, if you notice, I'm going to show you later on. YouTube purposely hinders the numbers on all IUIC videos. Perfect example. Deacon Asaph did a class one night. The viewership for that one class, I forgot the name of the class, was like 6,000 from Friday to Saturday morning. By Saturday afternoon, the class was at 2,500. We were like, what the hell? And Deacon Yawasab had just taken a snapshot of the views, but it went down that afternoon. We said, you see that? That's proof of the evil that they're doing. 
Go ahead. And number one, infiltration. Agents and informants did not merely spy on political activists. Their main purpose was to discredit, disrupt, and negatively redirect action. Their very presence served to undermine trust and scare off potential supporters. Ah, uh, their presence served to undermine trust? That's why some of y'all come in, I don't, tr- I don't know if we should trust them. Why? Because of the things you're hearing on YouTube and social media. Look, to undermine trust and scare off potential supporters. This is why many athletes and entertainers are afraid to support us or come out and speak on our behalf because what they did to Gene Seberg, they know they'll do to them. That's why they are afraid to come forward, okay? Come on. The, the FBI and police <laughs> exploited this fear to smear genuine activists as agents. Mm, go ahead. Number two, psychological warfare. The FBI and police use myriad dirty tricks. So, so the FBI and police use myriad dirty tricks to undermine progressive movements. Progress to undermine progressive movements. You know how many t- how pro- they call us the progressive camp. They say these guys is fixing men and women's lives. They're helping them keep their marriages together. We can help some of the people some of the time, but not all of you. But we try our best. But they said that's not acceptable in modern day society. Let's undermine them. Go ahead. They planted false media stories and published bogus uh, leaflets. Leaflets. Le- thank you. Leaflets and other publications in the name of targeted groups. Mm-hmm. They forged correspondence. Sent anonymous letters. You see that anonymous letters? Because you may say, well, they're not doing that today. Yes, they are. I'm going to show you how they're doing it. Remember with the presidential uh, debate, they said Russia had set, now this is alleged, allegedly Russia had set up thousands of fake accounts to go against Hillary Clinton. Y'all familiar with what I'm talking about? So, what'd you say? Say I can't hear you. Sock puppet accounts. Thank you. So today, many of the people y'all talk with or see on Facebook, those are fake accounts. I don't care if you see black faces or Spanish faces. A lot of them are fake accounts. They are used to to dismantle us and get a public outcry against us. Yeah, go against IOIC. They're evil. They're evil. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, there's an FBI agent. Like there's an article about... um, What's the guy that set up Facebook? What's his name? Zuckerberg. They said possibly, you, he, they, somebody wrote, whether it's true or not, I don't know. They said you, we might be shocked to find out that he was originally always a CIA agent. He was already hired. That's how the government got their hands into his Facebook account. That was his job from the beginning to do that thing. They just had to put a face to it. So these are things, just keep in mind. Like what is this? Uh, Arsenio Hall said, things that make you go, Hmm. Go ahead, Officer Leon. They forged correspondence, sent anonymous letters, and made anonymous telephone calls. You know how many phone calls I got, Captain Isaac got, who else? Where they said, oh, I think Captain Zeph, if I'm not mistaken, but I know Isaac and myself, we talked about it. I got a phone call. They didn't ring. I pick up the phone. Hello? They said, uh, this is the FBI calling. I said, really? They said, yes, there's been a terrible accident, and uh, there are drugs all in the car, and we found your Social Security card in the car. I said, you found my Social Security (laughs) card number in that car? They said, yes, sir, and there's a warrant for your arrest. I said, well, come get me. (laughs) Because my Social Security card's right in my wallet. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Did Captain Isaac the same damn thing? And that's to put fear in us. I said, Isaac, this is BS. I said, Dis- disregard it. But that's what they do. Go ahead. Okay. They spread misinformation about meetings and events, set up pseudo-movements groups run by government agents. Yeah, look at this thing. They spread misinformation about meetings. and There was a misinformation about me. They said I forced the whole congregation to eat pork. Anybody hear that thing? Yes. You remember that? I was like, who, who forced the whole congregation to eat pork? They said, you did. I smothered. Uh, uh. <laughs> Go ahead. They spread misinformation about meetings and events, set up pseudo-movement groups run by government agents, and manipulated of sh- or strong-armed parents, employers, landlords, school officials, and others to cause trouble for activists. Now, I'm going to tell you all this. Many times when we try to go into the prisons, they say, no, it's alleged that you guys are a hate group. You're not, you're not allowed. 
some school, some colleges. They go, oh, no, no, we got the phone call on y'all. Y'all cannot come up in here. This is what they're talking about. They strong-armed parents, employers, landlords, school officials. I heard a brother say, and I, and I tend to agree with him, don't be surprised if the Joy Morgan, B, the BBC special or documentary, is circulated through all the black and Spanish Christian churches. Why? To discredit us so that they will never, because remember, we got a big campaign with the churches now. They said, no, we got to discredit them so the churches will not let us in, will not give ear to them. That's what they're doing. Go ahead. They use bad, a bad jacketing to create suspicion about targeted activists, sometimes with lethal consequences. Yeah, you remember, Bishop, I don't know if you, you remember we was in Haiti. We left that park one day, we came to the other park. You remember that guy said, you got to get out of here. I just received a phone call that said, your guys, they don't want your guys to teach at Domo. You understand? Number three, harassment via the legal system. The FBI and police. Yeah. Click it. What's bad jacketing? Click that. Read off, Liam. Bad jacketing. The practice of creating suspicion through the spreading of rumors, manufacture of evidence. Ah, we've been seeing this on Facebook. That bona fide organizational members against who? Usually in key positions. You see that? They mm. go against organizational members, usually in key positions. Mm, right. Go ahead. Are FBI slash police informants. Mm, mm, I've been telling you all about this thing. Guilty of such offenses as skimming organization funds. Mm, let's go back. Damn. Let's go back. So the secret plot thickens. Because we'll just read in the Bible secret plots and think, uh, but now we have examples of what Esau has been doing to us, to our forefathers even. Go ahead. Number three, harassment via the legal system. The FBI and police abuse the legal system to harass dissidents and make them appear to be criminals. Right. Officers of the law gave perjured testimony and presented fabricated, fabricated evidence as a pretext for false arrest and wrongful imprisonment. They discriminatorily enforce tax laws and other government regulations and use conspicuous surveillance, investigate interviews and grand jury subpoenas in an effort to intimidate activists and silence their supporters. Right. What was the sister's name they tried to do that with? With the Afro. I always forget her name. No, not her. Uh, Angela Davis. Angela Davis. Go ahead. Number four, legal force. The FBI conspired with local police departments to threaten dissidents, to conduct illegal break-ins in order to search dissident homes, and to commit vandalism, assaults, beating, and assassinations. The objective was to frighten or eliminate dissidents and disrupt their movements. All eyes on us. That's why when I see things happening in the body, especially, and it's always key members, I'm like, this is not a coincidence. I said, something else is going on. Go ahead. Number five, undermine public opinion. One of the primary ways the FBI targeted organizations was by challenging their reputation in the community and denying them a platform to gain legitimacy. You see that? Denying them a platform to gain legitimacy. Today, where did they do that march at? Was it Nashville or Tennessee? It's some group me. One of, the cam one of our camps did a, a march today. Chattanooga, thank you. Thank you, Ezekiel. At first, they were like, no! We're, we're, we're not allowed to let you in. But then a sister said, no, nah, we should let them in. They were trying to uh, challenge our reputation in the community. They're no, we're up to no good. We're evil. This is what they're putting out about us. Uh, Hoover. Meaning J. Edgar Hoover. That's yes. what he's making reference to. So specifically designed programs to block leaders from spreading their philosophy publicly or through the community. Communication. I'm sorry. Media. Uh, Google me J. Edgar Hoover, um, Black Messiah. Type that up. J. Edgar Hoover, Black Messiah. J. Edgar Hoover. There will never be another Black Messiah unless we create him. See that? So anytime you see white folks rally behind a black man, they created him. Understand that. I'm going to say it again. Anytime you see masses of white people say, he's the one, he's the leader for black people, they made that dude. They made that dude. Go back out and type in uh, black, J. Edgar Hoover, black Negro unity. 
Negro Unity. I don't know. Officer Liam, can you see that? Can yes, you read sir. that? When FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover was asked what, in his opinion, was the single greatest threat to the United States of America. Single he, greatest threat to the United States of America. He responded, Negro Unity. Take a moment to let that sink in. You hear that? That's a threat to the United States of America. This is what Revelation 11 is talking about. This is what Ezekiel 37 is talking about. When they see us uniting, they feel threatened. Why? I'm going I'm gonna explain why later on. Go back to uh, methods. Y'all, I hope y'all wrote that stuff down. I know you didn't because I didn't see no pens flowing. Yeah, that'd be the one that soon did not. I'm out. Yep. That'd be the I'm one. I'm confused. I don't know. Where we at, Officer Leon? Uh, furthermore, right on furthermore. Okay. Furthermore, the organization created and controlled negative media meant to undermine black power organizations. Highlight that. Highlight that. Hey, come on, Officer Ina, feel Highlight that. Right. Read that again. Furthermore, the organizations created and controlled negative media meant to undermine black power organizations. Now, they see us, and although it's not a, this is not a black thing because we got Latinos and Native American Indians, Mexicans with us, but they calling it black to make it more threatening. And they control all negative media, which is meant to undermine us. Go ahead. So that we will not accomplish what God wants us to do. But they shall lose. Come on. For instance... They oversaw the creation of documentaries. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't make this stuff up. The FBI oversaw the creation of documentaries. This proves the FBI works in conjunction with London, the UK as well. This is why right after the march, the next, because that, that documentary was supposed to be released the end of the month. After the march, they said, no, drop it now, Harry. He said, but it's not ready yet, Tom. I don't give a damn. Drop it now. Do it. Do it. They rushed that thing to discredit us. Come on. For instance, they oversaw the creation of documentaries, skillfully edited mm, mm, to mm, paint mm. the Black Panther Party as aggressive. Skillf Lotus skillfully. skillfully edited. Have we not been watching skillfully edited videos there was a scum bucket with us who skillfully edited a video from three years of waiting and watching and recording things as scum bucket. Come on. He know who he is, and I hope you're online now. Uh, skillfully ahead. edited to paint the Black Panther Party as aggressive and false newspapers. That's Wait, as aggressive. They're a hate group. Right. They're a hate group. Go ahead. And false newspapers that spread misinformation about party members. The ability of the FBI to create distrust within and between revolutionary organizations tainted their public image and weakened chances at unity and public support. See that weakened chances at unity and public support. Our goal is to be unified and gain public support. We know the scripts say two thirds gonna be against this truth. We know that. But when y'all come into this truth, y'all should not allow anything to move you from knowing that this is the truth. Y'all understand that? Go ahead. The FBI specifically developed tactics intended to heighten tension and hostility between various factions in the black power movement. For example, between the Black Panthers and the U.S. organization. Now, the U.S. organization was another black organization. So they put problems between them. I'm going to give you an example of that. You got back to the scum bucket, the, the conquistador, El Carro, sending videos to other camps. Look, they're evil. They're against you. And you know what? I, saw, I ran into several brothers over other camps, and they said, hey, you know that dude that used to be with y'all? He's been going around saying how Asaph and you and the deacons all hate them, and they're furious. He said, I'm just letting y'all know what this dude is doing. So now it's video after video. Oh, IUIC is evil. And this is from fellow Israelites. This is what they're saying here. Read that first sentence again from the FBI. The FBI specifically developed tactics intended to heighten tension and hostility between various factions in the black power movement. That's what, remember, I don't know how many of y'all saw the video where I got interviewed by an a Edomite reporter named Sam, yes. And he asked me something to get me to speak against other camps. And I said, I'm not going to speak against them. 
That's what leadership is. You don't speak division amongst your fellow brothers and sisters. Even if they don't believe as you believe, don't do that. The media will leech onto that and use it against you to cause dissension. So although they may speak against us, we're going to sit back. We're going to show you how the leadership goes. Come up. Between the Black Panthers and the U.S. organization. For instance, the FBI sent a fake letter to the U.S. organization exposing a supposed Black Panther plot to murder the head of the U.S. organization, Ron Karinga. They then intensified this by spreading false attributed cartoons in the black communities, pitting the Black Panther Party against the U.S. organization. This resulted in numerous deaths, among which were San Diego's Black Panther Party members John Huggins, Huggins, Bunchy Carter, and Sylvester Bell. Another example of the FBI's anonymous letter writing campaign is how they turned the Black Stone Rangers head Jeff Fort against former ally Fred Hampton by stating that Hampton had a hit on Fort. They also were instrumental in developing the rift between Black Panther, between Black Panther Party leaders Eldridge Cleaver and Huey Newton, and ex as executed through false letters inciting the two leaders of the Black Panther Party. Okay, so let's end it right there. Uh, Captain Yadon just sent me a text. He wrote, I got the call, too, saying I own property in West Texas connected to drug cartels, <laughs> and the U.S. Marshals was coming to get me, and I was wanted this, I, and I was wanted. This was three months ago. This is what they're doing. This is another tactic. So I'm not lying to you when I say they're, they're making phone calls now because they're like, hey, Harry, these guys are not stopping. They're, they're, they're pushing harder and harder. We got to put fear into these niggas. Okay. Give me the video, uh, the BBC video. I didn't send, I didn't post it, so just go to it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Enoch, you know what I'm talking about. BBC Joy Morgan video. Let's go right there. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to beat this horse. We're going to beat this horse, ride this train. Also, uh, Enoch, do you, uh, all you got to do is... Type in IUIC. It's going to pop up. It's the first video. Yeah, when you, like somebody brought out last week, I believe it was, I heard. When you type in IUIC, the Joy Morgan BBC video comes up for boop, right there. Yep. And it was ranked number one before it got any views. That, may, it's like, that shows you how they, they, they yes, no views. Number they're, one. They're in control. They control everything. I want you in this video, give, go to seven minutes and 25 seconds. Seven minutes and 25 seconds. I think it's the wildebeest. Yeah, the wildebeest. In the U.S. They, they have the belief that Caucasians are, are literally, not figuratively, not like metaphorically, but they are literally the devil. So what white people have done, like with slavery, for example, and other ways of oppressing uh, black people, are because they're the devil, right? It's because white people have this, uh, you know, horrific, it's like we're, white people are genetically driven to destroy black people. Pause right there. In comparison there. Pause to the right Israelite there. community itself. Oh, you got the scum bucket on the screen. We're going to show him too. Hey, he said, he, it might be a he, whatever that thing was. Whoa, she was scary. Somebody used to date them people? Y'all crazy. She looked like a Neanderthal. Um... Give me the scripture in Ezekiel where it says, because of your hatred. So when, when we say that they hate us, it's not any personal thing that they have done to any of us individually. Because I'm sure if you examine the individuals in here, some of us may have had pretty good relationships with them at work or school or whatever. Had no problems. Some. But the, it doesn't change what the Bible says, though. That's the point. Let's see, is it Ezekiel 36, 5, something like Ezekiel that? Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 5. Right, Ezekiel 35, verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. You know what the word perpetual means? Everlasting. This is what God says about Esau and Edom. Read it again. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. 
in the time that their iniquity had an end. Right, when we were set free, when we were emancipated. Go ahead. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God. Well, I will, that was it. Oh. So the point I wanted out of that verse is that God says they have a perpetual hatred against us. So I don't think I'm saying it. She put it out there like we're saying it because of some racist agenda. It has nothing to do with a racist agenda. It has everything to do with the word of God. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. This is what the Bible says. Okay. Now, uh, Officer Liam. Yes, sir. Go to Amos. F yes, Amos. sir. Amos chapter 1, verse 9. What does it say? Read that for me. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus. I want the one by Esau. Oh, thank you. Yeah, right. Verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword. Meaning the Israelites, go ahead. And did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually. There's that word again, again. Perpetually. His anger did tear perpetually. Go ahead, was that it? And he kept his wrath forever. And he kept his wrath forever. So this is why when Habakkuk 2 and 4 or 5, Habakkuk, go to Habakkuk 2, read that. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is up, excuse me, but his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. You can't change this guy. This is the message. This is what the Bible is saying. You can befriend them, you can treat them nice, but sure as the summer is hot, <laughs> they will turn against us as a people. Now, you get black women that say, Well, I married the white man. He's like, remember Justin Volby? He rammed the, 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 the thing in the Abner Louima's rectum and ripped his into. Do I have the right guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Liam's looking at me like, I don't know nothing about that. Millennial you damn millennials, get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> the police, the white police officer, rammed the baton, the plunger, the plunger, right? Up the rectum of Abner Louima, was it Abner Louima? And tore up his insides. And then made the argument, but my girlfriend is black. Listen, he might like the nappy dugout, but he don't like us as a whole. Y'all ponder about what I just said right there. You just think you about that thing. Ouch. He want to get it in over there, the bed winch, but us as a people, he couldn't stand us. And what did Abner Louima do that was so heinous to deserve that? Did, did what? Yeah, he be a nigga. He was a nigga. That was it. I'm like, well, what could you do for somebody to shove something up your rectum and tear up your insides? I don't, I don't know what kind of crime was, did he do? Did it, Aliba, that was your cousin, what did he do? He didn't do nothing, he didn't do nothing. I'm like, what did the dude do? That dude didn't do nothing. That, that's the evil coming out the white man. Uh, yeah, read that verse again one more time. Habakkuk 2 verse 4, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. He's, your soul is your maker. He's like, how, what, how, what, how you made? The Lord said, that soul, is, that guy is no good. That means that no matter what he tell you, his, his spirit is no good. <laughs> you know, the God that made man tell you that soul of that man is no good. So if you find out a white folk do something good to you because it's, a, the, it's coming from the grace of God. But anything else he does, he do it. Uh, uh, you see me what we just read about the white dude, uh, yeah, the FBI dude? The way they do things, then you would think that they do it to fix our people to do this. No, the whole maker of why folks is to destroy us as a nation. Period. Yep, exactly. Let's go back. No, we finished that. Go back to the wildebeest. She's a monster. A big monster. I think she's bigger than you, Captain. She got you beat. She a heavyweight. <laughs> yeah. Go back to 725. We're going to go to 829. 725. We're going to go to 829. All this ties in with COINTELPRO, so I don't think I'm leaving a topic. SPLC is a production of COINTELPRO. Go ahead. Like she's an expert on us. Have the belief, they have the belief that Caucasians are literally, not figuratively, not like metaphorically, but they are literally the devil. So what white people have done, like with slavery, for example, and other ways of oppressing uh, black people are because they're the devil, right? It's because white people 
have this, uh, you know, horrific. It's like we're, white people are genetically driven to destroy black people. Uh, in comparison to the Israelite community itself, yes, they are hate. Wait, group. wait. This dude was with us for 13 years. Were we a hate group when we paid his rent? Were we a hate group when we counseled him when his wife sought after the BBC and no. committed adultery against him? No. Were we a hate group when we helped him get married to the second wife? No. She, all those songs she did. What is the song she did? Legendary People. Was yeah. that a hate group song? She did the other song, uh, Wooly Hair. Yeah. Was that a hate group song? No. no. So this dude is a, a demon. I've got to watch my work. I'm going to drop some F-bombs. Good thing y'all ain't in my basement. God, y'all be hearing some stuff. Is that the bishop? Yeah. You get me on video. <laughs> <laughs> this damn demon many times we helped this dude many times am i bearing for, am i lying no no that's true 100 percent. lord have mercy yes i like i mean i can see him went against me or deacon i think he was in our camp but to go against you and deacon asap that dude is ungrateful anytime lava or i thought they would see his stuff first first they would say hey this dude ain't right me and asap would go no leave him alone he's a good brother Always, and even his own cousin through his mother, mother's side, uh, uh, Captain Yashua and Captain Apart, they would say, hey, he's our cousin, but he's full of SH. Watch him, he ain't right. We would go, no, y'all bringing that, your family problems from the past into this. Leave him alone, he's a good brother. <laughs> and now that it happened, they said, aha, we told you. We told now me and Asaph got egg on our face. We were like, yeah, yeah, y'all did warn us. Hey, you, Rob, Laba, you was right. You yeah. warned us. Yep. This we didn't true. listen. Where there was no good listen. from the beginning. He was a garbage then. He's a garbage now. <laughs> Itself. Keep going. Yes, they're a hate group. Because the, the Israelite, to be an Israelite and to be part of a, a community of, of believing Israelites, you, you don't you don't learn to hate people. You, you, you're supposed to have a, a, a higher understanding than to just hate people. IUIC dismisses Bezalel Ben Israel as a disgruntled ex-member. It says it doesn't recognize the Southern Poverty Law Center as a reputable organization. It denies it's a hate group and says it doesn't encourage anyone to break laws. Pause right there. Stop it right there. Now, BBC didn't do their homework because if they did, they would know his name is not Bezalel Ben Israel. His name is Mark, M-A-R-C, Caro, C-A-R-O. I want to make sure you understand that. Mark, M-A-R-C, Caro, C-A-R-O. Look up Caro. It tells you it's a conquistador name. So we ain't making nothing up. Same video. Go to 2628. See, me and y'all went over this in Atlanta, but Atlanta dropped the ball and cor video got corrupted. I said, I'm getting it in when I come back to New York. We're going to get it. Go back. Go to 2628. Mierda. His name is Mierda. Leo? Leo. Oh, Mierda Leo. Yeah, yeah. 2628. Back to the scum bucket. It's cracker agent. People were able to do bad things to other people, and <laughs> nobody would say nothing because, oh, this person's an officer. This person's a. Stop right there. Oh, that's a damn lie. Do we have the complaint forms? Every IUIC, school, every IUIC school has complaint forms. If there's several complaints against a particular officer or captain, bishop or deacon, we will step and have meetings on that thing. So he, and he knows this. He's such a liar. Then what else was there? What else was there? Oh, and a complaint when he brought out a bit against Bishop Kanai, uh, he calls me on the phone uh, and, and crying. I said, what did, can I do to you? Now, he goes, well, nothing, but he did something to uh, Judah Mac. I said, Judah Mac, the issue you had with Kenai, y'all had a council. I was not present. I said, when you come back to IUIC, we can revisit this again if you want. He goes, okay. Then when it's time for him to come back, you know what he said? I don't want to come back. So what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, you freaking idiots out there? Play on. The this and they were literally scared that they would lose their their ticket to the kingdom. I guess, like you know, heaven or whatever you want to call it, uh, if they spoke up against this person. What you know, ticket to the kingdom? You want to call it, I, hey, uh, have we ever talked about a ticket to the kingdom? Person. What is he talking about? He's such a lying spigger. This dude, scumbag. scumbag. 
Hey, yeah, 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 believe it. You talking, uh, you thinking your words. We went a definition earlier at the class. To every word you say, that's the character of that man. Yes. I know what somebody's thinking right now. I know what you're thinking. I'm going to get the scripture. You're going right now. Some of you are thinking, oh, he called a man a scum bucket. He's scum. Hey, find me the scum bucket scripture. Thank you. Ezekiel 24. Yes. Get that. Ezekiel 24. So y'all know I'm not making words up. Ezekiel 24, let's start at verse 6. Ezekiel 24, verse 6. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is therein. That's uh, Mark Carroll's the scum that was within us. We're the pot. Go ahead. The and bloody who, city. Go ahead. And whose scum is not gone out of it. He didn't go out. Go ahead. Bring it out piece. Bring it out piece by piece. The Bible says the scum amongst us got to go out piece by piece. Peace. All the scum ain't left up in here. Some scum, male and female, is sitting here waiting to be revealed. And you're going to go out piece by piece. Jump down to verse 11. Then set it empty upon the coals thereof, that the brass of it may be hot and may burn, and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be consumed. The scum in the nation of Israel is going to be consumed. Y'all understand that? So when I say scum, I'm giving you scripture. I'm not saying it. Because it's a, a, a vile word. It's a Bible word. Let's go back. There's nothing personal. Yeah, nothing personal. It's strictly biblical. Give me Matthew 26, verse 15. Matthew 26, verse 15. I'm going to talk about Judas Iscariot for a second. Scum. Come on over, Salim. Matthew 26, 15. And said unto them, what will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenant with him for 30 pieces of silver. Judas betrayed Christ for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time. I don't know how much they paid Mark Carroll. But whatever they paid him, I hope it was well worth it. Because when the Lord returns and you see him face to face, you're going to remember all the evil that you did. And let me say this before I forget, because I might forget. You cannot celebrate, listen to what I'm about to say, next week, is it Sunday or Monday, the Day of Atonement, right? Isn't two weeks, Monday, Tuesday? You cannot celebrate that day knowing you did this evil. He cannot celebrate it. Uzziah cannot celebrate it. Who else did evil? All this even went on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, Mac. Mac Thomas cannot celebrate it. Masha Rafter cannot celebrate it. All the evil that they did, the, give me that Matthew 5 about if you did something to your brother, what you got to do. I'm going to just put it out there. I want all you evil scums out there to understand. That lying, uh, the flat-faced Chinese boy, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever the hell is He know who he is. Elmer. He cannot celebrate the Day of Atonement. <laughs> his name is Jackie Robinson. That's funny. And not Jackie Chan, but Jackie Robinson. Give me that Matthew, uh, 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 Matthew 5, it's around verse 23 something, where it says, if you go to the altar with a gift. Yes, sir. Matthew 5, verse 23. Listen good to this. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee. Rem and there rememberest that your brother has ought against you. What is the ought? You did all manner of evil against your brother. You went on the media and humiliated brothers. You even went so far as to get a brother arrested and those charges were thrown out. And you did aught against them. Go ahead. Leave there thy gift before the altar. You leave your gift there at the altar. And go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. Read that again. First be reconciled to thy brother. Again. First be reconciled to thy brother. And then what? And then Come and offer thy gift. That's why I said they cannot keep the Day of Atonement until they do that. They have to do that. And let me say this, not privately. If I do something to destroy your life publicly, I got to go and apologize. What? Publicly. publicly. So that's Uzziah. That's Mac Thomas. That's Marsha Roth. Oh, I don't even know his real name. Mark Carroll. Who else? What's the Chinese boy's name? Elmer Mata. Uh, there's a few of them out there. The guy from Denver, short breath. I don't know his real name. I always forget his name. All these people that went publicly doing evil, 
they must apologize. I want y'all to see this video. I hope you're listening right now. You cannot say it again. You cannot keep the Day of Atonement until you apply Matthew 5.23 down. You cannot. And it's going to be, it's going to echo in your head. I hope so. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.